I must confess, the very first time I saw this problem, I went, this is really, really hard. And then I thought I was going to do multiple processes to get the answer. But when I started looking at this, I went, okay, um, I'm glad there's an X on the outside because my brain just told me it has to be U substitution and I was right. But the only problem was I didn't know what to take as my U. Am I supposed to take this as my U or am I supposed to take all of this as my U? And in my investigation, I found out that if you take a small amount as your U, you're going to do repeated U substitution. But if you take a big amount as your U, you're going to have to do just one U substitution, but some more algebra. And because I love algebra, I took the bigger U and it worked out right. Let's get into the video. Okay, so I know that if I take the derivative of what's inside here, I'm going to get something like 2x somewhere from here. So there's an x available to go along with this dx, and that x is outside here. So um, remember, I, I said I was confused about taking the smaller or the bigger, but I decided to take the bigger. So this was what I chose to do, and it worked out well. And I want you to know that no matter how complicated the problem looks, always try U substitution first, unless you clearly can see another way out, especially if it looks like you need to use the chain rule if you were doing differentiation. Remember, U substitution works. For chain rule, for di if you were supposed to do differentiation, it should be the chain rule, okay? Um, so U substitution, let's see what we can do. So I decided to say that I wanna let U be equal to everything here, which is two minus the square root of one minus x squared. So let's see what du is gonna give us. If I take the derivative, this is gonna to go to zero, I'm going to have this negative remaining. If I take the derivative of this, it's going to be, remember this can be written as 2 minus 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. So I've taken the derivative of this, it's 0, and now I have my minus. Now the derivative of this is going to be 1 half, 1 minus x squared, raised to power negative 1 half, multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, which is negative 2x. So if I clean this up, it's going to look like this. This 2 will cancel this 2. This negative will cancel this negative. So what I'm left with is just this. Interesting. And an x dx. Okay, so I'm going to have dx here. Or I'm going to have x dx. And here I'm going to have just 1 over square root. 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, that's cool. So uh, it doesn't look like I have found anything amazing because it still looks as tough as it could be. Um, what can I do? Oh, look, I have here, I don't want to have anything in terms of x. What I want to have is just u. So here I have du. Um, but how can, is there a way I can write this expression in terms of just u? Because I know this is going to disappear, okay, because I already have x dx here. I can get rid of this if only I can write this in terms of u. And I can. So let's go work here. So remember, I'm going to do some algebra here. Look u equals 2 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I want to replace this expression with something only in terms of u. I want to get rid of this. So what will this be? If I um, switch this here, I'm going to have the square root of 1 minus x squared equals 2 minus u. Oh, did you see that? I can easily replace this with 2 minus u. And that's what I'm going to bring here. I'm going to say this is equal to 1 over 2 minus u. And then I have x dx. Now I have du. 
Okay, now I can take all the terms containing u to this side and leave x dx here. So I have 2 minus u du equals x dx. I'm done. This is so exciting because at this point I can go back here and rewrite this problem, okay? So that I can replace, see everything here is my u, x dx can be replaced with this. So this problem here, uh, because of the boundaries, I need to evaluate my boundaries. So let's quickly do that. Okay, that's always essential. So what will u be when x is equal to zero? It will be, it will be, um, let's plug it in here. It's gonna be two minus the square root of one minus zero squared. And that's gonna be two minus one. Because this is square root of one, two minus one is gonna be one. Okay. What will u be when x equals 1? It's going to be 2 minus the square root of 1 minus 1 squared. 1 minus 1 squared is going to be 1 minus 1, that's 0. 2 minus 0 is 2, so that gives us 2. So the upper and, sorry, this is the lower bound, this is the upper bound. So the lower bound is 1, the upper bound is 2. So this problem can now be written this way. Is the integral from 1 to 2 of x dx. Let's write that first. x dx is going to be 2 minus u du. So I'm going to write it here. 2 minus u du. And then this part here is just going to be the square root of u because we said u is this long expression. So it's going to be the square root of u. See how easily we have transformed this into something we can integrate with the correct boundaries. Okay, so, um, so this is now equal to, this is um, the integral from 1 to 2 of, if I distribute this, this is going to be 2 root u, so that's going to be, this u is u to the 1 half, so I can rewrite this as u to the 1 half, let's write this as u to the 1 half, so that is 2 times this, that's 2u to the 1 half minus, this times this is going to be u to the 3 halves du. All I have to do is integrate. You all know how to do this. Okay, so we do this and we're gonna have, um, if we integrate this, this is gonna be two times, I add this to this, it's gonna be three halves divided by three halves. So it's gonna be u to the three halves divided by three halves. Okay, evaluate it from one to two minus, I do the same thing here, it's gonna be u raised to power 5 halves over 5 halves evaluated from 1 to 2. Okay, let's clean this up. When this comes up here, it's going to become 4 thirds. So it's going to become 4 over 3 um, square root of u to the third. I've written it in a nice way so I can evaluate easily. This is 1, this is 2, minus this is, sorry, this is 5 halves. So this is going to be 2 fifths um, u to the 5 halves, which is going to be the square root of u to the 5 evaluated from 1 to 2. Okay, so this is 4 over 3, cube root of 8. You know what? I'm just going to write it as the square root of 8, rather, square root of 8 minus, if I plug in 1, it's just going to be 1, square root of 1. Um, the square root of 1 is 1. I'm done with this one. I go here, it's going to be 2 over 5. And then I'm going to have 32, square root of 32, minus square root of 1. That's minus 1. Okay, obviously, I know this will become, so here, let's write it on this side before I use the next line. So this is going to be, square root of 8 is 2 root 2, okay? So 4 times 2 root 2 is going to be 8 root 2 over 3. So this is 8 root 2 over 3, and this times this is going to be 4 over 3, minus 4 over 3. I do the same thing here. This is going to be 16 times 2, so square root of 16 times square root of 2 is going to be 4 root 2, 
4 times 2 is 8, so that's minus 8 root 2 over 5. Minus 8 root 2 over 5. Interesting. And then this, multiplying this, will be plus 2 over 5. Plus 2 over 5. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, the nicest way is to just make everything over 15. It saves us trouble, okay? Um, so I'm going to make this over 15, which means I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5 because the least common denominator has to be 15. So if I multiply this by 5, multiply this by 5, um, this is going to be equal to 40 root 2 over 15. Nice. Minus, I'm going to do this first so they can be next to each other. I'm going to multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, that's 24 root 2 over 5. So minus 24 root 2 over 15. And then I do this one. This put the plus one first. So I'm going to have plus. If we multiply this by 3, by 3, this is going to be 6 over 15. Minus, if we do for this one, it's going to be 5, 5, that's 20, 15. Minus 20 over 15. So you see what my answer is going to be. My answer finally is going to be 40 minus this, that's 16 root 2 over 15. That's 16 root 2 over 15. And then I'm going to have 6 minus, oh, that's minus 14, minus 14 over 15. Well, you can write your answer this way. It is nice and acceptable, or you can put them together and write 16 root 2 minus 14 over 15. However you like it, it's all good. I hope you learned something. Even if it looks hard, it is not that hard. Okay, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and tell somebody about this channel, and share this video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.